Okay, we are talking about inverse functions today, and this is section 2.7. Uh, so we have f of x is just our function of x. And the way we say that is f of x. And then anytime you see f to the exponent of negative 1x, that means inverse of f of x. And um, two functions can be inverses of each other. So I'm going to say if f of x and g of x are inverses, inverse functions then <coughs> then f of g of x and g of f of x both equal x I should put parentheses around that. So remember, these are your composition functions. Okay, so this tells us if they are function or if they are inverse functions. So we are going to look at the example on our paper notes. So we're going to go back and forth between our composition book and our paper notes for different examples. So our first objective for this section is uh, verify inverse functions. So on our solved problem, problem, it says show that each function is the inverse of the other. So they gave us f of x and then a g of x. To determine if they are functions of each other, we did the composition of the functions, f of g, and then g of f. So this is f of g of x, and this one's g of f of x. And if they both equal x, then they're composition functions. I mean, then they're inverses of each other. Go ahead and close your computer. You don't need it out. So then we are going to check and see if these are inverses of each other. So we'll do f of g of x. So remember that means f of whatever g of x is. We're going to plug that in for x. f of g of x. which means f of 3 over x plus 4. So we're going to plug in this expression in for x. So that would be 3 over 3 over x plus 4. We don't want to have a denominator of x here, so we're going to multiply top and bottom by x. Which gives us 3x over, this becomes 3 plus 4x. which would become, what would that become? Is that just it? Does that reduce down at all? Wait, since there's a minus four on the first one you put there. Minus four? Yeah. 
had it on the floor. Yeah, because it would have been minus four here. So Hold on. Four, so then that four would be gone? Yeah. Let's see. Let's look at that again. So it would be three X plus four, minus four. Which, yeah, that would be. So then it'd be three over three over X. And then get rid of the denominator by multiplying by X. So that would cancel. And this would be three X over three, which equals X. Okay. Thank you. So did y'all see what I did wrong the first time? I forgot to include this whenever I plugged this in for X. That was my mistake. So it does end up equaling X. So now we'll do the G of F. So we'll do G of 3 over X minus 4. So then it's 3 over. I'm going to plug this whole thing in for X. So it'll be 3 over X minus 4 and then plus 4. Um, for this, we could um, write this as a division problem and keep change flip. So it really should be 3 times x minus 4 over 3. Flip the denominator and multiply. And then plus 4. Which when we multiply this, the 3's will cancel leaving us with x minus 4 plus 4, which equals x. So it says determine whether they are inverses of each other, and we were able to show that there. Okay, let's look at our paper notes again. Let's, let's write the instructions for how to find the inverse. Steps to the inverse of a function. Okay, so our steps will be um, replace f of x with y. So usually we have the function f of x, let's say it's 2x plus 7. Well, we will replace f of x with y. And then the second step will be switch x and y. And then the third step would be solve the equation for y. And then replace y with f negative 1x, which says that's the inverse function. And then the last step would be to check your answer. 
And the way you check your answer is by doing the f of g of x should equal g of f of x, which should equal x. That's what we found earlier, the composition. If f and g of x are inverses, then that's true. So I guess I could have put the f of negative 1. Really should be f of f of negative 1 of f. And then you do it the opposite way, f. All these. Instead of using g of x, we should use f and then the inverse function f. Throwing that g in there kind of confused it up a little confuse it a little bit. Remember f of x is what we're saying is our function and then the f negative 1 of x is our inverse function. So we have the steps down. We're going to look back at them as we do um, the problem. Solve problem two and pencil problem two. Okay, so let's look at the problems. So this is the one that's actually worked out. So it gave, gave us that f of x equals 2x plus 7. Then step one was to replace f of x with y. So it's y equals 2x plus 7. Interchange x and y, so switch x and y. So instead of saying y equals, it's going to say x equals to y plus 7. And then solve it out, so we have y equals. And then replace y with f negative 1 of x, and that is your inverse function. So we'll actually do this problem. So we have f of x equals x plus 3. So we're going to replace f of x with y. So y equals x plus 3. And then switch x and y. So we are going to do x equals y plus 3. And then solve for y. I'm going to rewrite it where it says y equals x minus 3. And now replace y with f negative 1 of x equals x minus 3. And we can determine that these are functions of each other or inverse functions of each other by doing, which means f of f of negative 1 x. So this would be f of x minus 3. So that means I'm going to plug in x minus 3 into this original equation, which would be um, x, which would be x minus 3 is your x plus 3. Minus 3 plus 3, or 0, so that equals x. So that shows that that one equals x. So then you do the opposite, and you do f of negative 1, f of x, which means f of negative 1 to the f of x, f of negative 1, and then the function is x plus 3. So we plug in x plus 3 in for x. So you have x plus 3 and then minus 3, which equals x. So that shows that it is true. So this is the correct answer.
Okay, let's look at 2B. So 2B shows us an example. 4x cubed minus 1. So in order to uh, do the inverse, you would replace f of x with y. So it's y equals 4x cubed minus 3. Interchange x and y and solve. x equals 4 y cubed minus 1. So in order to solve it, we need to add 1 to both sides. So we see that there. And then subtract, uh, no, divide by 4 so we can get y by itself. And then the opposite of cubing something would be taking the cube root. So that would be our inverse function. So we're doing all the inverse operations to get the inverse function. Okay, so on this one, it says replace f of x with y. So it's y equals x plus 2 cubed. Switch x and y, so now it's x equals y plus 2 cubed. And now solve for y. So I can't add anything yet. i got to get rid of this exponent first. So I actually need to do the cube root first to both sides. So now we have the cube root of x equals y plus 2. And now subtract 2 on both sides. So negative 2 plus the cube root of x equals y. You could have also wrote, wrote it cube root of x minus 2. But really, you want to have your constant out front so that this cube root doesn't accidentally move on over because you're not taking the cube root of 2, so you want to keep them separated. So that's why I did them this way. So now we'll rewrite it as y equals negative 2 plus cube root of x. And now we'll replace it with f negative 1 of x equals negative 2 plus 3 cube uh, plus the cube root of x. So either answer this one or this one is fine. Just be careful with your root here that you don't accidentally make that root go all the way over. Okay, here are our, um, ones that are rational numbers. Yeah. Good. Okay. Okay, so this has x plus 1 over x minus 5. So you're going to replace them. Then you're going to get rid of the denominator by multiplying both sides. Distribute, and then keep on moving things till you get y by itself. So let's go ahead and do this one. So f of x, so we're going to replace f of x with y equals. And then we are going to do um, x's and y's. In order to get rid of this denominator of y minus 2, we're going to multiply both sides by y minus 2. So those cancel, and we get y minus 2 times x equals y plus 4. Distribute the x. So that'd be x, y minus 2x equals y plus 4. Right? 
Remember, I need to get to say y equals. So I need to move this four over to the other side. Or do I keep it on that side? Minus four. So then I need to get the Y out of there. So now I have X, Y minus two X minus four equals Y. But I still have this Y. So I need to subtract the X, Y on this side. So I get negative 2x minus 4 equals y minus xy. And then since both of these have y's, I need to um, get one of them out. So this would be a y and then 1 minus x. So then divide by 1 minus x. Okay, since these both have negatives, I need to factor out a negative on top. So it's negative. 2x plus 4 over, well, let's factor out a negative here. If I factor out a negative, that'd be negative 1 plus x. Or we just flip them around. And the negatives are going to cancel each other, leaving us with 2x plus 4 over x minus 1. And then it's still y equals. But we need to write it as the inverse function. So this is the actual inverse function. So there was definitely some uh, kind of craziness that went on here that could have been easier in a different way. If we look over here, what they did was they subtracted X instead of going the opposite way. They flipped this and this. So we should have done this instead. I flipped it around. This would have made our steps much simpler. So then you would do a y x minus 1 equals 2x plus 4. And then divide by x minus 1. Sorry about that. But we still came up with the right answer. It was just a little roundabout way. Not the simplest route. So it still comes out to the 2x plus 4 over x minus 1. Okay, let's look at um, objective 3. Use the horizontal line test to determine if a function has an inverse function. Do y'all remember the vertical line test? Yeah. So vertical line test said um, if you can make vertical lines all the way down the function. And if it only touches that function one time, then it's a function. So horizontal line test would be 
do horizontal lines to determine if its inverse is a function. <laughs> My horizontal lines are not so horizontal. They look a little diagonal. So use a horizontal line test to determine if the following graph represents a function that has an inverse function. So since a horizontal line can be drawn, this function does not represent a function that has an inverse function. So no inverse function. So then the other one, these were uh, horizontal lines. That one looks pretty good. This is going to get closer and closer to that X axis. So it still passes. An inverse function exists. The graph of the function f consists of two line segments. One line segment from negative 2, negative 2, negative 1, 0, and a second segment, negative 1, 0, and 1, 2. Graph f and use the graph to draw the graph of its inverse function. So the way we are going to find the inverse function is use a table of the function f of x. And then write the new table for the inverse function. Inverse functions just have inverse x and y. So our function is 0, negative 4, 2, 0, 3, 2, and 4, 4. So our inverse function would be the inverse of that. So negative 4, 0, 0, 2, 2, 3, and 4, 4. We just flip the x's and y's. Switch x and y. And then we would just need to draw the graph of its inverse. We would just graph it. So if you look at the answer key on that one, all they did for the answer key was just graph it on and make a line. Okay, we are not going to uh, do that last example. So that is it for the notes. So y'all can start working on 2.7. Do what? Yes.